Hello everyone, this is Tribecast episode 26 and my name is Marina. This week I will provide to you two interviews recorded in Tampere during this summer, so take it as a break from Tribecast summer tour. First I will discuss whether a podcast can be a business with Annika Kartano. And then we will learn about the early days of Tribe Tampere community, the goal of GCI United and the dementia care from Heike Wittenen. And while you're listening to all that, I will be preparing for you the next episode of Tribecast Summer Tour from Kotka, where a ship startup festival is happening at the moment. This is Tribecast, episode 26, and my name is Marina. We're back to our studio in P47, and I should say a big thank you to everybody who was helping me during the Podcast Summer Tour, or is still helping, because when I was asking on social media for some contacts to record. I got lots of names also from people who are not anymore living in the summer tour destination places, but who are interested to talk to you. And one of the recommended names is Annika, uh, who is not anymore in Seinayoki. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, so welcome back to Tampere, Annika. And please tell our listeners a few things about yourself. Yeah, hi, and thank you. What an honor to be here as a guest so my name is Annika Kartano and I have a own business here. I've been entrepreneur already for six years, soon seven. Yeah, I have a studio for recording and photographing. Here I started as a photographer, then added to my offerings graphic designing and I studied at Seineaki Business Administration. So I'm a Bachelor of Business Administration. I graduated last uh, March and yeah, now I'm here. So as you might have noticed, the core idea behind Tribe Castre is talking to people who are connected to startup life. Mm. What's your connection to startup life? Yeah, well, I network a lot. I don't consider my business as a startup because I have had it for several years and during the past year I started to grow it. But, uh, well, I have worked in Crazy Town. There I was connected a lot to startups and I come here to try to network with startups and I follow the startup scanner a lot on social media. Okay, so quite part of the ecosystem, are you? But let's talk a bit about your business. Sure. Um, first of all, I usually ask people, is it worth starting a business of your own nowadays in Finland? But let's be a bit more specific. Mm -hmm. Is it worth to try to monetize a podcast nowadays in Finland? Yeah, well, pod making a podcast takes a lot of time. When me and my friend Maria do our own podcast, Business Vallankumous, which is best business revolution in English, we easily put 10 hours for one episode. Obviously, that's a lot of time. And the episode length is? From 45 minutes to 10 minutes. There's a lot of variation on that, but easily, like with marketing, editing, we do everything by ourselves. So it takes a lot of time, no matter the length. Yeah, if you have a lot of listeners, then you can make it hopefully profitable. And that's also our goal someday. So if you have a great topics, interesting guests, you are interesting on your own or you have really good platform, you have good sound quality, well the quality is good, then then you can make it profitable. Hopefully we also do it someday. But you're already like doing it for quite a time. Yes, we just released our eighth episode and now we have a summer vacation for it. And we are going to start our second season during autumn. And we have really big plans for it. I'm not going to release anything yet. But yeah, we have really big plans for it. We started to podcast beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. So kind of like six months we have done it. In general, if someone want to start a business, in your opinion, how to figure out what to do? Interesting question. Well, first of all, you need to start a business that you have really 
big like inspiration for because if no one else believes in you or your on on your business idea you need to believe in it I have those days where I'm like okay this is never gonna work and like I lost uh, inspiration motivation but then in the other hand when I see what I have already done and how excited my clients are I start to believe it and again and of course there's a bad days but also good days so believe it and make it work because nowadays you can start business from your hobbies or whatever you like to do if you just have a lot of motivation energy time and money to do it I say do it And you have a bachelor in business administration. Do you think that to start a business, one needs to study business at the university? Or can you just start and then like learn by doing? Yeah, that was actually how I started. I was 16 when I started my business and I just had really good network and background support because my dad is an entrepreneur. So I got a lot of help. And obviously, when I was 16 years old, I had no idea what it's like to run a business so no you need don't need to have business administration degree or any kind of degree well you just learn by doing and it's still learning every single day even even I have been entrepreneur for over six years Do you remember right that you worked in Crazy Town, Hame yeah. and Lina, right? Yes. As a community manager. Yes. I haven't included Hame and Lina in, well, summer tour, mm. because we talked with the, a few people from the community there and decided that maybe maybe next time. But still, can you a bit, you know, recall on your experience of being there? What's going on in Hame and Lina? Or what was going on when you were there? Yeah, well, I noticed that the areas in Finland, like in business, are, are totally different. Well, I, of course, compared when I was working at Tamelina and now my experience is there for the Tampere area and Seineki area and also Vasa because I have worked also there. So Tamelina is pretty similar than Seineki, I would say. It has a lot of potential, from my opinion, and I'm really glad that there's the Crazy Town community gathering people together But there's still a lot of mentality that I'm an entrepreneur or starting a business and I can do this on my own. And people maybe don't appreciate or understand the worth of network and doing things together even though you have your own company and you are working alone for it. So I'm really glad that there's Crazy Town. And people say about Hamalaiset that they are like slow and uh, warm up slowly and yeah I could I could see that there. Okay maybe for some people it might seem that this inner protest against networking is somehow compared to this nordic personal space mm. feeling but still since you mentioned it especially since you mentioned it why to network why to get out of your office and meet other people if you're already like doing something well it's awesome to meet new people obviously it's pretty difficult to think so how do i start a conversation and what to ask first and we actually did one episode of this for our podcast and what i learned from our guest Johamatti Santala there was that you always on networking need to think what I can give to others and not mainly what the others can give to me. So always think how I can help the people I meet and it's actually pretty good to have networks from very various professions or not on like your backgrounds yeah backgrounds and not from your own what you're doing like you do photographing it's actually pretty good to tell about your business to someone who doesn't do the same thing because then you can have more opinions of what you're doing take a look at it from like totally different perspective and it actually opens your eyes so i'm always into networking <laughs> 
Then we can only invite you to the next events of Tribe Dumper community and hope to see you around in the P47 co-working space and outside of it when we have outside events. Of course. Uh, but thank you for the interview for today, Annika. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have one more guest for this week, and this is my colleague and a person who did lots of stuff for Tribe community and whom I genuinely respect as an entrepreneur with a good spirit and so on and so forth and generally a nice person constantly answering some stupid questions of mine. I actually do have a couple of questions to you work-wise, but let's get to the podcast. So hello, Heike, and please tell our listeners a few things about yourself. Hello, Marina. Thank you. So my name is Heike Vitanen. I'm a well, startup entrepreneur. Maybe that's the first thing that comes to mind. I'm around from here. I did my schools and everything in Tampere and I tried to move to Helsinki last September, but That didn't quite work out, or I still have the place, but I'm mostly here. I know that you have a startup called Memocate. Mm-hmm. According to your social media, at least, you're quite rock and roll in this world, guys, like with all these really? uh, events in Stockholm and Helsinki recently. Oh. So, but let's get to the very like background and basics. I know what you're doing, but let's tell our listeners what Memocate is about. Yeah, first of all, good to hear that it <laughs> looks great out to the outside. And uh, from the inside, it is also going well, I think. So Memocade is a spin-off startup from the University of Helsinki. We started roughly two years ago, or actually me and my co-founder Camilla, we started already almost three years ago. So we are offering, doing trainings for healthcare sector, uh, especially for dementia caregivers. And uh, as everybody knows, dementia is a huge societal problem. And it's only going to grow. So globally, at the moment, we have 45 million people suffering from some sort of dementia, Alzheimer's or Levis Part disease or so. The number is going to triple during the next 30 years. And why we wanted to start doing trainings for dementia caregivers is that Camilla, my co-founder, she's a researcher and linguistic and professor in the University of Helsinki. And uh, she had been researching the interaction between dementia caregivers and the persons who have dementia. And she started to have feedback when she was giving speeches and presentations that this kind of research should be available also for the people who are doing the very care work, everyday care work. And we happened to meet at a startup camp It was called Belt Bootcamp, organized by Demola Network and Laurea University, University of Applied Sciences. And it was in Jurmala, Latvia. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and Camilla met there and instantly clicked. I loved what she had been doing with her research. And I also loved the idea of helping people who are suffering from dementia and their caregivers and also family members and relatives. So I felt that it's an important topic and I felt like I had something to give. Camilla was looking at co-founder. She didn't have a company yet and didn't have a clear idea how or what she would be doing with her research. And I felt like since I'm I'm not a coder, I'm not a designer, many of the other startups at the camp were looking for specific expertise like that. But I have none. I was studying public administration in, in the University of Tampere and I had been active here and there in uh, associations doing project work here and there and uh, I think I'm best uh, when something new needs to be created to put to start so I hopped in to Camilla's team and it was just the two of us back there in 2016 we slowly well, step by step started to plan how to turn Camilla's research into a training program And I just wanted to be a little bit more specific. What's mm. exactly your product? Yeah, at the moment it's one month long training program where we combine e-learning on our platform with classroom learning or workshops. So our learners start with e-learning that lasts for roughly one week on the platform where we have produced content, videos, animations, cartoons, and uh, they start with the basics of dementia and interaction. Then we bring them together into the work first workshops where they do more practical exercises with, with each other, other caregivers. And uh, after the first workshop, they have two or three weeks more time to continue on e-learning and then they come back to the second workshop where we wrap up the whole training experience and first initially we wanted to do only e-learning because of all it's scalable we wouldn't need to go every time 
to the customer, give workshops and trainings like that. But pretty soon we realized, because it's about interaction skills, that's what we are focusing on. It actually has to have some kind of face-to-face component, like the workshops, to have an effect. It's called blended, 